Well, it's the first video of the new year, and we're back with some more password. I was actually going to record this before the end of last year, but I kind of got distracted with a little project I was working on, so mm, didn't happen. But here we are, carrying on with the Roswell State from where we left off last time. Which was when Dave was about to fall asleep. Either way, it was a job for the morning. When I awoke, I felt oddly rested. For everything that had been running through my mind when I went to sleep, I must have slept all right. Opposite me was Roswell, still sleeping peacefully. He seemed just as happy as I remembered. My smile faded upon realising everything else still on my mind. I rolled onto my back, letting my hand rest on my chest I stared at the ceiling. Would Roswell be a good person to ask for advice on this? How he seemed to tear into Tyson yesterday seemed out of character too. Did something happen? I still look at his happy face again before going back to the ceiling. Wasn't meeting him if he was having that good a sleep. Roswell had changed over the time I'd known him. I was only really starting to realise that the longer you're living in such close proximity. You'd be more of a pushover. Timid. But now... I hadn't realised it properly, but he'd become a lot more sure of himself. A lot more confident. Something that I wasn't sure that I was matching him in. I looked at him again, just in time to see him start to wake. The other seemed to still be out of it as I checked. Orlando was sprawled out on his back, fingers twitching every now and again. Hoss, meanwhile, was curled up on his side, looking placid enough that the only sign of him still being alive was the steady rise and fall of his chest. Roswell yawned, drawing my attention as he slowly opened his eyes and looked at me. Oh, good morning, Dave. Morning, Roswell. Did you sleep all right? I did. I had a pretty good dream. I don't think I've had one of those for a while. Oh, yeah? What was it about? Oh, well, this is probably going to sound silly, but cake. Cake? Decadent chocolate cake, whipped cream, cherries that works. Well, that sounds pretty good. I don't think we'd be able to get away with it for breakfast even if we asked nicely, though. No sooner the words were out of my mouth, the others began to stir. All three of us taking a few more moments to properly wake up for acknowledging one another. Morning. Oh yeah, good morning everyone. Did everyone sleep okay? Brilliantly, in fact. Ready for another day. Oh, I didn't sleep too badly myself. You ought to get that beauty sleep in, right? Beauty sleep? Really? Do you have to be so extra in the morning, Hoss? Oh, uh, sorry. Extra what? Extra, uh, you know. More than what you can handle before coffee, Dave. Oh yeah, I'll skip on that then, please. Hoss, do you really care about your appearance that much? What makes you ask? Well, your mane is a mess for starters. It, it is? Hoss hurriedly tried to come it back into place with his fingers. It was hard to tell if he's putting on an act or if efforts were genuine. It just look that bad, Hoss. Don't worry about it. To be honest, not getting it sorted soon after waking, getting it all tangled, which is a pain already to comb out. Oh yeah, I don't like getting my fur brushed when it's like that. It hurts. Well, that'd get too bad and you just have to trim it down. Really? You can get that bad? I'll count myself lucky that mine never bunches up like that. It's one of the advantages of having short fur, I suppose. But those who are just really fluffy. I wonder if Dean and Tyson get the same sort of problem. Can we not talk about him, please? Why? What's wrong? I just really don't want to be thinking about him this early in the morning. Oh, uh... I guess we can talk about something else. Uh, Dave, how are you feeling after yesterday? Better. Wait, what? Yeah. All the stuff that upset you last night with the vault showing you stuff. Nothing happened, right? We're all here. The other group should be too, right? Actually, we should go to breakfast, right? Meet up with the others? Probably a good idea. Guess I'll head back to mine to go put on some pans at the very least. Let's do this again, though. It was nice. Mm, yeah, time for breakfast. Uh, thanks again, Hoss. Orlando and Roswell shuffled out of the room, leaving just Hoss and I behind. Oh, um, thanks for letting us sleep in your room, Hoss. Not a problem, Dave. Now scram so I can get changed. I filed out of the room to head back to my room so I could get changed. 
As I headed back to mine, I noticed Roswell mumbling to himself, dipping into his room and shutting the door behind himself quickly. Something about that seemed odd. Odd enough that I doubled back to his door and knocked lightly. Uh, Roswell? Are you okay? You're, uh... No, I'm not okay, Dave. Roswell picked up one of his shirts and threw it on, sighing out. I have a lot on my mind, okay? I'm tired, stressed, and a whole lot of other things. Tired? But didn't you have that nice dream about cake? It's a different kind of tiredness. Oh, well, is there anything I can help with? I don't like seeing you upset. and You've been acting all weird lately. Roswell looked away from me, not wanting to make eye contact, and he went quiet. Did, did I do something? Oh, God, no, not at all. Well, it's complicated. Something I'm still trying to sort out. Is this what caused yesterday? Oh, don't. It's still too early for that talk. I did a double take. It was unlike Roswell to be so fired up about anything, even this early. But am I right? Partially. Well, hey now, that's not fair, Roswell. Weren't we... I mean, the other day we... And... I was gesturing loosely with my hands between us, hoping that my explanation was coming across clear enough without having to explicitly say it. Well, maybe. It's not like I've had any experience with this sort of thing. You think I do? Well, Roswell, is everything all right? Like, really, is this something I can help with, or is it another of those things you just need to work through by yourself? I don't quite know yet. Can I get back to you on it? I think for now I just need some alone time before breakfast to think. Oh, um, okay. I started back at the room before turning to the door, hand placed on the handle. You said I was like an older brother, right? I did, yes. Why? Do you see me as someone able to help too, or... You've always been the smarter of the two of us, but... Like I said, it's complicated. Sorry. Well, I guess we'll talk later then. Sure, I'll see you downstairs, Dave. I left Roswell to his thinking and headed back to mine. It stung a little to think they looked up to me, but at the same time didn't seem as reliable enough to help. I could totally help, even if it was just listening to his problems. But if it was something more than that, well, I had my job to do today. Maybe finding out some information about the vault from Oz would be a good start. Roswell was smart, but he didn't know everything. Even then, maybe if I just ask Oz what the code to the door was so Roswell and I could open it together, it might put him in a better mood. Once I was changed, I double-checked that I had everything I needed and headed downstairs for breakfast. I came downstairs, with everyone else arriving within minutes. My eyes looked at each of them in turn, checked them off in my head. The moment all six of them were in my sights, I sighed out in relief. Good morning, everyone. Morning. Hope everyone slept all right. That could have been better. Wouldn't mind if it was a longer rest. I still feel sort of stiff after yesterday. I had to cross to Orlando, catching him watching Sal briefly before looking at the ground. Good, good. Now, with everyone here, I suppose I should ask if anyone killed Benson last night. Anyone? My heart sank, stomach sinking. Was Roswell making light of what I went through yesterday now for some reason? Is this what Roswell wanted to think about? Is he just trying to lighten the mood? The fuck is your problem? Roswell, what's got into you? What, too much in poor taste? Well, sorry for me for trying to... I started to drown out what the others were saying, something else catching my ear instead. It was distinctive clacking of shoes on tile, each stride taken with deliberate purpose, measured in equal cadence. Even Roswell, Orlando and Tyler stopped talking and looked towards the door to the dining room. Standing there, hands clasped behind his back as if nothing was wrong, was Benson. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. All of us watched as Benson kept his pace, walking around us to the kitchen. He opened the door, looking back at me before calling out. Uh, Master Dave, would you mind if you and I had a chat in private? It uh, should not take long. I found myself pointing at myself with the otter wandering into the kitchen without waiting for an audible reply. He spoke the same way a teacher or a parent would, where their question was rhetorical. I, uh, I guess I'll be back, guys. I pushed open the door of the kitchen and closed it behind me, looking round to see if I could spot Benson, finding him near the coffee pot. Um. Benson held a finger to his muzzle, focusing on the coffee brewing for a few more moments before he turned to me proper. 
I owe you a great deal of thanks, Master Dave. For going to talk? Benson stroked the ends of his muzzle while the fur bunched up in a sort of moustache, thinking something over. Uh, may I be plain? Uh, apologies. I mean, may I speak in a more casual manner? Oh, uh, of course. Now, Dave, my boy, the master of the house informed me of the efforts you went through last night. The master? I believe he'd given you the title Oz to go by, yes? Oh, uh, yeah, him. So you do work for him? Of course, I'm his butler. Beyond that, however, you fretting over my life is a gesture that has flattered this old otter, my boy. Truthfully, uh, thank you. Well, uh, I wasn't sure he should be responding here. Was he just humouring me? Was he sincere about how he's feeling about the whole thing? Where had he been while he was going down anyway? No one mentioned seeing him doing the search for the gun anyway. As a sign of my gratitude, may I offer some advice? Your advice about what? Once more, Benson's hands stroked his moustache before he turned to their place behind his back. Would I be right in assuming that your uh, plans for this evening are to converse with Oz? That's... Oh, well, yes, but if you know his name, can't you tell me? I'm under instruction to not speak as plainly as I am now until you two have spoken proper. But why? Loyalty, my boy, loyalty. There's no greater pleasure in life for a butler than to serve the house and its inhabitants. You are bred for the role, or at least grow into it. For me, there is no more fulfilling purpose. The downside, however, is that your whims are beholden to another, sometimes to your detriment. I am getting off track. He's deliberately testing your ability to find him. I just have to find the library, right? Correct. Where is that, though? Have you not found it? There are multiple points of entry. Oh, bother. Well, then perhaps a clue. I've been forbidden to disclose its location to you, but I can nudge you in the right direction. Is that okay? You're not going to get into trouble, are you? Ah, the kindness of youth. Do not worry for me, my boy. I've lived long enough that I know what I can take and what's deserved. I can assist you in many other ways, just not the loca location of the library, and not yet, at least. What well, other ways could you help me? If I can manage it, advice, insight, weapons, if you so desire. W weapons? Why would I need a weapon? All things considered, Dave, is it much of a surprise? You claim to have seen the results of what a weapon can do, yet you balk at an offer to keep yourself adequately armed for self-defence? Truthfully, I'm astonished that the offer is indeed genuine. There are many things around the manor that you could use, some less subtle than others. Um, can I let you know later? Oh, actually batteries. Can I have batteries? Batteries? What the devil do you need batteries for, my boy? Oh, um, in case the ones in my flashlight go flat. Heavens, and here I was thinking you were planning something with a car battery. I shall see what I can scrounge up and leave them in your room later. Oh, um, that should be fine. Again, it seems we've gotten off track. Once you meet Oz, I'll be freer to talk. Until then, the key to finding the library is to talk to one of your friends. One of my friends has found the library already. Wait, why does that sound familiar? I can confirm that yes, one of them has. After all, they've been here before. Benson's admission left me stunned. Someone had been here before. When? Why? Which one? It must have been a habit with Benson playing with his moustache once more before replying. Unfortunately, that's all I can tell you for now. Benson turned away from the coffee pot, satisfied with how it was coming along. Either it just took a long time to get going, or this was some sort of special slow roasting process I was unfamiliar with. I watched as he started to prepare breakfast, putting things out of the pantry that I hadn't noticed before. Muffins and the like, almost as if it had been restocked recently. Is it normal to be concerned? Concerned about what, my boy? I just want to keep my friends safe, that's all. But I get the feeling the more that I mess with the things, the harder I'm making it for myself. Ah, grounded worries at that. For what it's worth, the master of the house is a decent person. Someone that I'd put trust in having a vested interest in things coming out for the best. But is that outcome everyone surviving? Would any other ending be as satisfying? So I can trust him then. My question made Benson freeze, if only for a moment before he continued preparing things at his usual pace. Decency? 
and trust aren't mutually exclusive, my boy. It is something you'll need to decide upon meeting him. Okay, but do you know who's behind it? Who'd want you dead or who's putting these images in my head? I do not. A lot of the enemies I once held are now long gone. For various reasons, mind you, but I know nothing, nothing I know of can assist in your understanding here. But can I trust you? I believe the best way to answer that would be to say that if you can trust Oz, you can trust me. My loyalty to the master of the house guides me to act in his best interest. If his objectives align with yours, then consider me an ally. Bear in mind, I am still just a butler. Your decision to trust in me does not affect my duties around the house. Which I'm assuming after yesterday means that there is a likelihood that you may need some laundry done. Well, uh, yeah, uh, sorry about that. It's quite all right. Now, any other questions? Uh, just one. By all means, my boy, what's on your mind? Do you think we're going to make it out of this, okay? Benson sighed out, going to play with the moustache but stopping short. Perhaps he was lost in thought, searching for the right thing to say before he gave me a look. I couldn't place the expression exactly, but it was somewhere in the realm of worry. I can only hope so. We stood in silence, with Benson breaking for I did to continue preparing breakfast. Meanwhile, my eyes found the floor, tired again. Coffee. I needed coffee. Is everything going all right in here? I jumped, not hearing Hoss enter the kitchen. Hoss? Oh, um... Ah, oh, Master Hoss, yes, everything is fine. Master Dave and I were just having a chat, that's all. I hear you all had a busy day yesterday, and he had some concerns about my well-being. Truth be told, I couldn't much of it myself. Oh, I see. Where have you been anyway? You've been scarce lately. Ah, just rest in the old bones. When you get to my age, you fall into the weather from time to time. Hmm. Yep, lion. Uh, pardon? You're lying. A lion, my, what an amusing idea. Perchance would you be willing to lend a hand with breakfast? A man with a keen sense such as you must make for some excellent conversation. Uh, sure, I don't mind giving a hand. What about you, Dave? Can I help out too? I not believe you wanted to head back out to the others, though. Dean and Tyson were getting antsy as to how long you were being, but I'm not sure much of that was their want of coffee coming through. Uh, you stayed there the two times, so let's go and see what's going on in the dining room. I looked at the door Hoss had come through thinking about the other that I left back there. Yeah, I should, probably should head back, only to make sure Dean and Tyson are okay, right? Young men that are without food in their stomachs can be irritable for sure, Master Dave. Go on, the two of us can manage just fine. All right, thanks for the chat, Benson. No, no, thank you, Master Dave. No sooner I'd walked in the dining room, I bumped into Dean, who was lingering near the door. Oh, oh, Dean. What did he want to talk to you about? You all right, pup? Uh, I looked between the two of them before looking past them to Roswell, Orlando and Sal, currently seated at the table. I wasn't gone that long, was I? What did he say? Nothing important, really. Dave, you were gone a while for a brief chat. Did he chew you out for something, or...? My guess would be that he wanted to thank you for being concerned. Am I right? Uh, yeah, it was. How did you know? We weren't exactly quiet last night when searching. He probably heard us. Did he say anything about that? Michael might have wanted him dead. But nope, he had no idea. It was worth asking. Where does that leave us? Waiting for breakfast. What, not going to go help out? Hey, I don't have to cook if I don't want to. Yeah, all right. Who's on for meals today, anyway? Well, I suppose I could volunteer for lunch. Depends on what Benson's doing. If he's around more now, we might not even worry about it. Any idea where he went, anyway? Like, why he's not been around? Oh, um, sick, apparently. Well, no surprise there. He's pretty old, right? Almost as soon as he'd finished talking, Roswell started coughing again, covering his mouth. Oh, jeez, that hasn't cleared up, huh? You're taking anything for it. I don't want to catch whatever you have. Your concern is noted, Tyson. Seeing that Roswell's behaviour had possibly improved from yesterday, he looked exhausted from almost coughing up a lung. 
We'll just take it easy. We'll see if we can't get something to help out that cough. I washed his Tyson got up and headed towards the kitchen, brought back to reality by Sal nudging me. Do we have any plans for today? Not that I know of. And you have any ideas? Oh, not really. I assume that you want to do something again in the group. So long as it's not too draining, I should be alright. Just need to get a nap in later to make up for last night, and I should be alright. You didn't sleep well last night? Oh, not really. I had a bunch of, well, stuff on my mind. Maybe the sleeping arrangements didn't help. Uh, sorry, Dean. Oh, it's alright. Nothing a nap later won't fix. I'll be fine. It wasn't long before Benson and Hoss emerged from the kitchen, laying food out on the table. I grabbed food for myself and started eating. Dean poured me a cup of coffee. No sooner the smell of it hit my nose, I felt at peace again, sighing out despite the mouthful of banana I had. Occasionally I'd shoot Benson looks, unsure of what to make of my situation. He was joining us for breakfast this morning, it seemed, satisfied with eating his porridge and coffee nearly as black as Dad took it. I looked at the others at the table. Which one of them had been here before? Who knew where the library was? I had a feeling I knew, but with the whole day ahead of me, I wanted to try and figure it out myself first. And I was wondering. Wondering what? I noticed that Benson was now listening in, curious despite keeping his attention for the most part on his porridge. What's everyone doing today? I'll probably just hang around until I'm ready for my nap. Maybe I'll go soak in the tub for a bit before turning in. Maybe... I'll do the same. Hot of her? Oh, mind if I tag along? Not at all. Mm, I'll take a load off today. Just sit and watch TV. Lando, want to join me for a bit? Oh, sure. Watching anything in particular? Oh, nothing comes to mind. How about you, Pick? All right, I think I've got just the thing. What about you, Roswell? Oh, no plans. Might just be lazy today, or wander around the house. Hmm. Well, okay. Not worried about me. I can take care of myself. I shot Roswell a look, wary, but said nothing more on it. I did need to talk to him about yesterday, but I had to get a start on searching for the library. Well, good. I'll be back for lunch then? Dinner? There were nods all around when I got up to leave. Oh, Benson, something's been bothering me as of late. Oh, well, whatever can I do to ease your troubles, Master Roswell? Well, it's just... We're the only ones here at the moment, right? Just the eight of us here in this room now. My eyes darted to Benson who moved to play with the moustache once more. That's correct. The only ones currently in the manor are the eight of us in this room. Uh, no one else. Right as Hoss cleared his throat, I looked at him. He caught my eye and stopped, about to say something, but giving me a look instead. Was he about to call out a lie from Benson? Should I let him? My mind tried to remember if this was going to be a problem or not. I vaguely remembered something about Oz not wanting to give himself away, so if he was the mysterious ninth person in the manor, was it meant to keep him hidden or say something? Benson must have got caught Hoss's gaze directed at me, him too now looking at me expectantly for a decision to be made. No one else was saying anything, seemingly happy with Benson's original answer. Just eight, huh? Yep, just eight. I laughed, nervous. No sooner the words out of my mouth, that classic hyena chuckle gave me away. I snuck a glance at Hoss, who seemed floored by my comment, but made no mention of it beyond that. Yes, he was happy letting things unfold for now. Well, good to know, I suppose. I'm a little odd if the person who lived here was still, well, here. Now, Master Roswell, that's why I am here. If the master of the house was still around, you'd likely have seen him around by now. I nodded slowly. At this point, I wasn't sure if I was convincing myself further on what Benson claimed to be fact, and McKitty, one of my friends, is Oz or not. There are only eight of us, huh? Well, hey, if Benson never wanted in on the scavenger hunt proper, at least we'd have even teams. I uh, don't know, no, these old bones are much too tired to be gallivanting about the place like I did in my youth. No, I appreciate the offer. Well, if you change your mind, just let us know. Why, well, I believe I shall. But I believe for now I shall clean up from breakfast and move to doing some laundry. I shall be around if anyone needs anything, anything at all. Benson picked up his breakfast dishes and wandered into the kitchen without another word. I watched him go, fiction as to whether or not I made the right decision. Well, that 
exactly is that then? Well, I'm going to go wander around the mansion, seeing everyone at lunch. Boswell left soon after in the same way Vincent did, disappearing into the kitchen. Well, I'm going to get changed with the hot tub. I'll be coming too. Tyson? A lot. You're coming? Yes. Oh yeah, give me five to get ready. Three of them filed on out, leaving their spots at the table as they were. Thankfully, they hadn't made too much of a mess, but... In a hurry, didn't clean up, clean up after themselves. All started stacking his dishes along with Tyson's before moving on to Sal's. Well, I was going to go after clean up after breakfast anyway. At least I could do giving you help make it. Well, I'm happy to help out too. Many hands and light work and all that, right? Sure, between the three of us, we'll be quick. We gathered what we could and brought it into the kitchen, making a few trips back to put what leftovers we had back in the fridge for later. I should just about do it. Shouldn't we wash the dishes too? I feel bad just leaving them for Benson. It'll be fine, right? Will it be though? Probably. Come on, Orlando, let's go hang for a bit. I watched both of them leave, sizing up the dishes. They weren't all that many in the grand scheme of things. Maybe I should do the dishes? At the same time, though, I could just as easily leave them for Benson to do. Okay, dishes. I wandered over the sink and started working down the list of things I needed. Dish soap, check. Plug, check. Sponge, double check. I don't know why there were two, but I guess I had a backup in case one broke. The sponges break? I started filling the sink with hot water, waiting until it was actually hot before putting the plug in. Dad said that only hot water made dishes clean. I remembered Orlando saying something to that effect too. Then again, the stuff Orlando used was really fancy. Or at least said you had to clean them in particular ways to stop them from breaking or just going bad. Plug in, dish soap in, and the water began to foam. Okay, so what do I clean first? Like to what Hoss Orlando and I gathered. There were plates, mugs, some glassware too. I wash glass first, right? Or was it plates? Let me think. Water is clean, which means the first thing I clean is... Glass, I think. That way they stay really clear. I think that's what I'm supposed to do. So I washed the glass where I noticed that after I'd scrubbed them clean, they were crystal clear after the suds had been rinsed off. Then came the plates. Austin Orlando had already started things by scraping what scraps were left over, so all I had to do was scrub them free of grease and the like. With the plates done, the water was starting to get cloudy. With only a few mugs left, I washed them up too before setting them aside. As I dried my hands on a tea towel and turned around, I came face to face with Benson. Uh, uh, Benson, oh, hello. What are you doing, Master Dave? Oh, I just thought the dish is helpful, you know. I gestured over my shoulder with my thumb, hoping I'd done a good enough job to pass for something a professional butler could do. Ah, well, it is appreciated that you'd step in, but that is very much why I'm around. But helping is good, right? Absolutely, Master Dave. Oh, um, just Dave is fine. As you wish. There is another thing I wish to thank you for, at least now, knowing you did the dishes. And what's that? For not pointing out the Master's presence. Well, there's every chance he's one of us, right? And there being an extra person will just complicate things, right? Complications are a matter of opinion, my boy. But you are correct. It's every chance that he's one of your friends, or someone else. Wait, so... Is he or isn't he an extra? I was starting to think there were nine of us here. Did you not come to that conclusion when you conversed last night? That there was indeed an extra beyond just your friends? Well, now that I think about it, could you be Oz? Pardon? Yeah, like, you know the house well enough and I haven't seen you and Oz at the same time, so... Astute observation. Perhaps I am Oz. Wait, really? I suppose you'll just have to wait until tonight and see when you can find the library. Any tips for that beyond what you said before? Benson seemed to think things over, stroked his moustache. How much about large houses like this do you know, Dave? They cost a lot of money. They do. Uh, what else? Like a lot of money. Perhaps I should rephrase my question. 
Oh, and they can be spooky. Why'd you say that, my boy? Because sometimes they have... Realization dawned on me as I worked through it. This wasn't some movie or some work of fiction. This was an actual house, right? Have what, my boy? I feel like he might be onto something. Benson, does... Does this house have hidden... Thingies, passages and rooms? Benson, with a known smile, held a digit, digit up to his muzzle, indicating to be quiet. Why, what a novel idea, Dave. Wait, so... I believe that should you go searching, there is a chance you might find something of the sort, but who's to say? Now, we're on a long day. Happy hunting. I nodded at Benson and scurried along. There was somewhere I figured I should start my search. I headed upstairs and wandered into the museum. This was the best place to start looking, after all. I had a good reason for assuming this, too. I always knew I was here, and of all the rooms I knew existed, there was no better to start researching. I'd been in here with Roswell. I remembered something in one of the books about a floor plan, if only in passing. See if there was any chance of me finding the library this way. The museum had the answer. After all, where else was there likely to be a secret held? With so many books, the answer was bound to be in here somewhere, right? Pulling the book at random off the shelf, I started to flick through it. I frowned, seeing nothing but pages upon pages of text regarding... something. The words were long and difficult. What is this, anyway? Turned the cover over my hand, looking at the title. I really should look at the covers of books. This one's just about... wait, mycology? I looked at the book again, flipping through. Sure enough, there were pictures of mushrooms listing what they were called, a bunch of other scientific terms about them. Ugh, this book is too hard. Can't I just have one with pictures? I put it back on the shelf, pulling out another one, not bothering to look at the cover in favour of checking if it had pictures first. Wait, this is just children's stories. I read a few of the titles as I flicked through the pages, stories I remember my dad reading to me as a kid. But now is not the time for such stories. They weren't going to help me find the library. Or oh, doing some light reading? Whoa, Roswell. Oh, it's only me, don't worry. Doing some wandering of your own? I half expect you to follow the others at the pool, or even hang out with Hoss and Orlando in the rec room. Well, I just thought I'd do some research. Oh, on anything in particular, or... Oh, um... You don't have to try so hard, Dave. After all, we're partners, right? I can still try. After all, after yesterday, I don't want to be the one everyone's protecting. No offence, but what you were claiming was a bit out there. Right, that's why I'm looking for proof. Something, anything to prove I'm not crazy. Well, all right. Need some help? I won't turn it down if you're offering, but I'm able to do it myself, I think. Well, if you say so, I'll just go look over here for some completely unrelated reason, then. I shot Roswell a dirty look as he wandered away, snickering to himself. It seemed as though his attitude was still lingering. Next half hour, we just looked through books in silence. At some point, Roswell picked something out and sat on the floor, leaning against the walls he idly read something he'd chosen off the shelf. So much of being beyond our level of comprehension. Still, I kept at it before finding a green-covered book and flicking through it. The moment I saw floor plans, I knew I'd hit the jackpot. Most of it was about the architect that built the house, but thankfully had the original floor plans along with annotations, on some notes regarding the layout. Downside, however, no library. In fact, a large portion of the house seemed to be just not here, just not be here. The vault wasn't listed in the basement. Some of the rooms I hadn't been to were on, weren't on here. Obviously, they've added a whole extra wings and afterthought. Damn, I thought that'd be it. What would be it? I hesitated, wondering whether or not it'd be best to clue Roswell into what I was looking for, whether or not he was the one that had been here before. I shot him a look, sizing him up. I was wondering if there was, like, maybe a clue as to how the mansion was built. Or anything in particular. Maybe a clue to where more medals could be. Roswell looked at me, expression blank, shy of that smile he had plastered on his face. It was hard to tell what he was feeling, but it was clear he was thinking in the silence following my question. Hidden rooms and stuff like that. Hidden rooms, huh? Interesting. Interesting, how? It'd be very on theme, don't you think? What, like murder mansion having secret means of moving around to get us? Well, exactly. It wouldn't surprise me if there was something given how big the place is. Why wouldn't you have a secret panic room? If you're rich, why not splurge on one? Is that normal? Well, I can certainly have the money. Why not? I feel that's sort of a waste of money, isn't it? 
Well, maybe. Unless you're hiding something there as well. Hmm, maybe. In any case, secret room seems likely. Huh, well, any ideas on where any could be? Honestly? Well, it could be anywhere. Unless you went through every room with a fine tooth comb, you're unlikely to get one by accident. Hmm, you have a fair point. Are metals really why you're doing this? Because if that's what we're doing next, more than happy to start going through the rooms with you. I gave Roswell a quick once over and sure. We've got to do something, right? Especially after yesterday. Maybe there's something more to what's going on. Well, yes, they sure was something. Not going to lie there. Yep, you were tearing to tie something fierce, too. You're not going to let this go, are you? Don't you think you were going a bit overboard? I've never seen you act that way. It was, well, it was what? You have been a bit of an asshole. You know, like saying he's, una he's unable to love? That's pretty low, Roswell. And if it's true? But how do you know it's true? Have you spoken to him recently? Why would I go and do that? You don't remember who he is, right? Tyson. D. Tyson, remember? No, I remember just fine. Remember, he's my friend. You really think that? You really think that he's... That he's what? That he's changed? Well, yes. Given his behaviour so far, but I expect that all of a sudden he's turned over a new leaf. Because he hasn't? Exactly. No, what I mean is, it wasn't certain he's been like this for a while. You have gone a long time, Roswell. Things change. You can't honestly expect me to believe that you've fallen for him. No, not that, but just... Yeah. Well, go on then. He's important to me. Roswell shook his head, sitting his book down and standing from his spot on the floor, rubbing his temples. You have Stockholm Syndrome pretty bad, Dave. I what? Have you forgotten everything bad that he did? What do you mean? You can't honestly tell me you've forgotten everything he did to us. He shaved your fur, he stapled my ears to the school notice board, he dragged you around by the tail. Need I mention the countless times he beat you for your lunch money? That's all in the past. Well, I'm just meant to forgive him. Oh, sorry, Tyson, guess I should just forgive you for everything now. Dave said he was okay. That's not what I meant. Then what, pray tell, are you meaning? It's not really my place to say, is it? Do you generally have a reason for him or are you just making excuses? I sighed out, mimicking Roswell and rubbing my own temples. Just, when you moved away, a lot happened. Sure, Orlando was around, but Tyson was also around. Things changed. But also I learned about other things. Why he did some of the things he did. Oh, this is going to be good. What sob story did he tell you, Dave? Not so much a sob story. I was over at his place once and there was a fight with him and his dad. Get me behind him the whole time so his dad didn't get to me too. Why well, you just stayed there? Why didn't you run? Because I wasn't going to abandon him, Roswell. He was hurting me because of me or something else. It didn't matter. You don't just abandon people in trouble. You can't be serious. I am. Why would my da what would my dad have thought if I'd left him in the lurch like that? He was in trouble and I was the only one that could help. So what happened after? He then tell you his life story? No, this all happened after I knew bits and pieces. This was more proof, maybe. Not that some of the things he said was stuff he'd normally lie about anyway. Like, the lunch money thing. What about the lunch money thing? Well, probably it's in show now, but he doesn't get to eat every meal, Roswell. I find that hard to believe. Okay, so maybe I invite him over pretty often to eat. So now he's just leeching off you at home. It's not like that. If you didn't get to eat every meal sometimes for a week, what would you do? Yeah. Roswell, he stole from us, he didn't go hungry. Whether he wanted to or not, he didn't have a choice. When his dad was blackout drunk, he showed me. The cupboards were bare, what little was in the fridge had gone off. It was real bad. That's not an excuse. Look me in the eye and say that, Roswell, I dare you. You've been so harsh on me, you haven't given him a chance. You don't even want to give him a chance. Yes, it was just not fair, so much so you should probably apologise. You can't be serious. There's no way I'm apologising to him. What, are you going to keep picking fights with him? You're the smartest out of everyone here, Roswell, so I expected you to at least know better. What? You heard me. Tyson can be a jerk, but yesterday you were more of a jerk than he's been lately. I let the comment hang in the air for a bit. Roswell went to speak a few times, the words just not come in. Instead, he resigned to pulling the fur on his chin instead. Felt uncomfortable confronting Roswell like that. There was history, I knew that. With him being gone so long, it just didn't seem right to be holding on to things that happened so many years back. So, was there a reason? Anything? Did he do something recently, or... 
Well, no, not that. Well, it's probably silly and not much of an excuse, but... But what? Well, after the other day, I've been thinking more about dying recently. Not suicide, but more conscious about what little time we have left. We're still young, Roswell. Yes, I know, but... What if tragedy strikes? What if something happens to either of us? Death can come at any time and just... What happens if it's tomorrow? What if it's in five minutes? Shouldn't that be enough of a drive to get you to confront the things you wanted to? To say the things you've always needed to? But to take it out on Tyson for the things that happened all that time ago. How's that fair? I have a vested interest now. In what? Me? You dummy. You dummy. I think maybe I've been crushing on you for a while now. At least I think that's what it is. How bad of a crush are we talking? Or just enough that you make it really hard to think about what I should be doing, what I should be saying. I prided myself on being able to see things so logically, but... But that doesn't give you an excuse to treat him like dirt. What, do I have to forgive him? To some extent, yeah. But why? Because like it or not, he's important to me, Roswell. He's family. Family? Yeah, family. I'm not picking sides, but the moment you make me choose between the two of you, then I'm sorry, but... Am I not important? Important too. I'm not going to put up with you putting me on the spot I'm the juice between my friends. What sort of friend would I be to have to abandon either one of you? And what sort of friend would you be to make me have to choose? I... I... Look, just no more pot shots at Tyson. He's been good so far, right? Well, but what about the other day? What about the other day? I'm not an idiot, Roswell. You were pressing his buttons deliberately. You can't prove that. You're right, I can't. I know Ty and I know you. And I know that you know he wouldn't kick up a fuss about the wolf and dog thing unless provoked about it. Why'd you rile him up like that anyway? Is it trying to get him to hurt you on purpose? Are you jealous? Are you trying to get rid of him? What? Okay, fine, I'm jealous. We were friends first. He is a terrible person. And I hate that I didn't clear who you wanted to bring first. No, you need to accept that he's changed, or at the very least give him a chance. I can't make you apologise, but I think you owe it to him. Or if not an apology, promise me you won't go making it hard on him on purpose. If you accept them, by all means, but don't go picking fights with him. Fine. Roswell started a grumble, kicking the ground. Oh, sorry, Dave. Not to me, to Tyson. He sighed out, retrieving his book and dusting it off, tucking it under his arm. It's not easy to let that go. I want to see proof from him that he's gotten better. You're not willing to trust me on this? Not really. Those scars run deep. I want an apology from him just as much. So if you apologise to each other, I'll consider it. We're here for a month, so logically speaking, you're right. It makes no sense to be at odds given proximity. You want to pass me towards the entrance to the museum. Where are you going? Out of my room to read. And the apology? You're not my mother nor my therapist, Dave. I'm not trying to be, but you're my friend and I'm trying to help make things better. Well, let me work through it on my own. I reached out in vain, stopping him from leaving, but he strode out of the room with a purpose. Oh boy. Looking around the museum again, I wonder if there's any hope of me finding what I was looking for in here. So much as there were books, this apparently wasn't the library. It did leave me with two options, though. I could check in with the guys at the pool or see what Hoss and Orlando were up to. Uh, Master Dave. Oh, hello, Benson. How are things? Uh, fine, thank you for asking. How fares the search? Not too well. I was just in a museum trying to figure out if there were floor plans or maybe something is another clue. Have you questioned your friends yet? Oh no, only spoken to Roswell, but he wasn't very helpful. Not that I asked him about it directly. Ah oh, well, the day is still young, Master Dave. Now, if you'll excuse me, there is much work to be done. Ah, but before I do, Oz wanted me to deliver something to you. Oh, how come? You will grow tired of me saying this, but it comes down to loyalty. Suffice to say, he entrusted me with something to pass on. Oh, I like presents. No, Master Dave, it is not a physical boon. Oh. Information. Just something to keep in mind for later. All right, he laid on me. Bring your flashlight. My flashlight? I'll provide adequate batteries for if you need them, and leave them in your room before dinner if you so wish. Easy, I can do that. Very good. Now, happy hunting. I watched as he wandered down a side corridor out of sight before weighing up what should do next. There was still some time before lunch, so depending on how long I checked with him with either group, I might not get a chance to check with the other. Let's see what Orlando and Hoss are up to. 
I could hear them as I approached, discussing something in earnest. The moment I heard my name come up, I hid on the outside of the room, listening in. What about him? So, did he see Mob this morning to you or what? Uh, not really, why? Oh, do you really believe him when he said, with the thing downstairs? My breath called in my chest, waiting for the answer from Orlando. Of course I do. I just worry that, what if I was wrong in what I saw? What if I was wrong in, well... Wrong in what? What I experienced or what he experienced being the same thing. But you did see something. I'm positive. I just don't know what to make of it. It was fuzzy. Like, I was dreaming. Or that there were a few things going on at once. I just worry this is going to mess with him in some serious ways. Both of them fell silent, and sneaking a peek I could see them both thinking it over. I took this as my, took this as my cue to enter, doing my best to pretend I hadn't overheard anything. Hey guys. Dave. How long have you been there? I caught some of the conversation, but uh, should I pretend I didn't hear it? No, it's all right. Just talking about yesterday. Just, it's weird, right? The whole thing about downstairs, what is that thing? Why is it affecting you like that? I wish I knew. You guys have been talking about that all morning. Oh, no, it just came up really. We've just been swapping back and forth between shows. Just relaxing. So another day at the anime club, then. I sort of, all we're missing is Roswell. Well, don't go, go expect him to come join us. He's settled in to do some reading at the moment. Did you run into him? Yeah, I was just looking at the museum for something and he ran into me. And, uh, it wasn't much of one. I spoke to him about yesterday, too. Oh, what did he say? You could probably guess. Essentially, he's jealous, but what Ty did to him way back runs deep. I didn't realise it was, well, that bad. Sure, Tyson still gives me the shakes when he's talking to me, but... He hasn't actually done anything that bad. You don't think so? Well, things considered, he's, he's been pretty blunt and outside that one thing with Roswell. He hasn't been that bad. Uh, can't be that bad a guy if he's willing to help me out in the gym, right? That makes sense, I suppose. I don't know. I'm still a little sceptical. Well, I can vouch him at least. That must mean something. Dave, I don't know. Uh, sure, I'm in. You what? What? Well, I'm not scared of him. You might just need a friend. Aside from Dave, at least. If it helps, maybe I can be in the room too. What do you mean? Like, how about you, me and Tyson do something? Same with you, Hoss. I don't know. Well, it doesn't have to be anything big. Maybe we could just watch a show together. Anime, got it. Wait, no. Tyson likes anime too. Maybe we should make him a shirt. Okay, maybe we should slow down a little bit. Maybe find out if he wants to watch anime first. Okay, Hoss, we have to pick something good. If he hasn't watched anime before, we have to start off strong. Ah, oh, that's a tall order. Don't even know what sort of things he likes. Well, maybe we can tick off Magical Girl anime. Unless he's like Sal, I don't think that'll go over very well. Oh, sport anime. Maybe just get something a bit of humour. Maybe just ask him. But otherwise, that seems like a good idea. Include him in things and maybe he'll be, uh... Well, we'll see. There's time, right? Right. Oh, come, sit with us for a bit, Dave. They'll grab it before lunch anyway. All right. For the next while, I sat with Hoss and Orlando watching the TV as they swapped episodes with one another. When it was time for lunch, we filed out and headed downstairs. We reached the bottom of the stairs with me lingering behind Hoss and Orlando. Was it worth asking if they'd been here before? It'd be better to ask one of them now before we all grouped up again, right? Let's see what Hoss has to say. Hey, Hoss, uh, can I borrow you for a moment? Me? Uh, what's up? Just need your opinion on something, but in private. Uh, all right, sure. Orlando wandered towards the dining room on his own while Hoss and I rem remained on the stairs. So, need my opinion on something. Uh, yeah, sorry. I uh, don't apologise. For its worth, the shirt looks fine. Cute even. I, what? The design, it's cute. Oh, uh, thanks, but that's not what I wanted to ask about. Well, I'm all ears. Have you... Been here before, Hoss. Uh, Hoss? Uh, sorry, did I hear you correctly? Were you asking if I'd been here before? Yeah, to the mansion, like Benson reckons one of us has. Does he now? Mm-hmm. How did that come up anyway? Oh, um... Remember, I'll know if you're lying. I know, um... I was looking for something, and that's the only clue Benson gave me. Well, if you could call it a clue... Uh, so far, so good. What are you looking for? A room, actually. The... wait. 
I thought back, the memory coming back to me, something Hoss had said way back when we arrived. Hoss, there's a library here, right? Yup. Can you show me where it is? But you already know where it is. Surely you've been in there already, with a suit of armour, no? No, no, that's a different room, that's a museum. Well, I guess I was mistaken then. You're lying? Hoss, the day we got you, you said, um that the library was a big room that covered multiple floors, right after Roswell talked about the museum. Uh, so... So you must have found it then, right? That, or you'd been here before. Hoss sighed out, running his fingers through his mane, sizing me up. The corners of his mouth twitched upwards, almost as if he was trying not to laugh, but he kept a straight face beyond that. Uh, sure, I can show you the library. You mean it? Yep, cat's out of the bag. I know where it is, so I'll show you after lunch. Sweet, thanks. Although you don't strike me as a library type, there's no other reason you wanted to go there. Um, you know what? Don't worry about it. You don't want to tell me it's written all over your face, but you feel like sharing. You got my curiosity piqued. All right, I'll I'll uh, I'll keep that in mind, but lunch? Lunch. By the time we'd all filed into the dining room for lunch, we all looked at one another, wondering where lunch was coming from. Had we not decided this beforehand? Still in my mood of wanting to do more, I wandered into the kitchen. After all, I might as well have a turn at some point, right? Lunch. Lunch. Um, I looked around the kitchen, wondering what I could make. I exactly told anyone I was going to make lunch, but that should be an expectation, right? The loaf of bread I picked up seemed good. Sandwiches were lunch, right? Sandwiches. I must have zoned out. I could smell the bread in my hand, and I thought back to lunch at home. The breakfast for toast had been made. Uh, Dave, are you okay? He's got the bread. Sal, not now. Bread. Sandwiches, right? I gestured the loaf in my hand in vain, momentarily forgetting bread was a necessity for sandwiches. For lunch, yes? Yeah. Did you need some help? Oh, no, no, I've got it. Just, uh, what do you want on them? Peanut butter? I don't mind peanut butter, but... Can I have... Well, I prefer PB, PB and J if we're doing sandwiches. Oh, I can do that. I'll cook you what you need, Dave. Call it out and you can be the chef today. I'm going to get the bread. But I have the bread. You can both have the bread. No way one loaf is going to be enough to feed any, everyone anyway. It's pretty basic. But after I got to cutting the bread along with the loaf Sal brought over, I assembled it in all the sandwiches and brought it into the dining room. Sandwiches. Oh, can't be the classic, thanks. Dean sounded tired. We took a sandwich and sat down, eating a lot slower than I'd seen him eat before. Ty wandered over and snatched up a sandwich before sitting down a few seats down from Dean, bite into his sandwich. I must have had too much peanut butter on that one as he started eating with a lot less gusto and chewed a lot longer on a second bite. Oz came up next, taking a sandwich and taking a bite without bothering to sit down. Roswell took his sandwich much like Tyson did, without a word before sitting on the other side of Dean. Well, uh, thanks for the sandwich. Sorry, it's um a little basic. Hey, you took initiative and made something. It doesn't matter if it's something fancy or basic. You made an effort. I chuckled, embarrassed, but held on to a sense of pride welling up on my chest. You're not allowed to say that. You got that bread. Sal, so, I don't think... Oh no, he's been literal. We walked in on Dave with a loaf of bread in his hands. Is that not what you say when someone goes for their goals? And Dave's goal was just bread? For sandwiches. Oh honey, no. Lionel and Sal took a sandwich where I sat the platter to carry them down. Taking one for myself, I stayed standing, looking around as I ate. I looked to Hoss and caught him looking back at me. He's going to show me the library, which made the next part of my day easier. All I need now is to scope it out and go from there. Well, I remember, who's on dinner duty tonight? Please, not me. Uh, I guess I can again. Even though you were last night? Well, someone's got to do it, and Dave did lunch. Any other takers? Well, I'll do it, assuming I get my nap in. Might need some help, though. Roswell, you able to give me a hand? Oh, I suppose so. Should we plan what we're going to have, then? Well, let's see if we can find Benson first. If he's got dinner sorted, then we won't need to do anything at all. Oh, if I see him, I'll let you know then. 
Once we'd all been fed, I took the platter back into the kitchen and wandered back into the foyer. Everyone else had wandered off the time being. I didn't even pay attention as to where. Not that anyone stuck around to see where I was up to either. Well, now what? I guess I could... Uh, hmm. Oh, no, wait. I didn't notice Benson until he cleared his throat, just standing just off to the side. Ah, is everything all right? Uh, yeah, everything's fine. I even know where the library is. Very well done, Master Dave. Yeah, Hoss is going to show me later. Is he now? Mm-hmm. There are a few moments of silence before Benson spoke again, almost to the point where I was wondering if I was meant to say something else. Shall I leave you to it, then? You seem to have yourself sorted. I, uh, yeah, okay, I think I know where to go from here. Then I am glad. Oh, but, um, Benson. Uh, yes. Uh, thanks. I think nothing of it. I watched as Benson wandered off down the corridor back towards the kitchen, leaving me alone in the foyer. My next job was to go find Hoss and get him to show me the library. I scrunched up my nose as I tried to think things over. Hoss knew about the library, so he'd either been here before or just found that room, right? But if he'd been here before, did that mean he's behind the others dying? The thought sent a chill down my spine. The other option that he was Oz, which meant that he was trying to help, right? Why doesn't this... But it doesn't... Looking up from the foyer to the first story, I wondered where he was now. He said he'd show me and there was no time at the present, right? I started to climb the stairs, figuring I should check his room to see if he was there. Hoss? I peeked into his room, covering my eyes just on the off chance he was indecent. Oh, what are you doing? Are you decent? Nope, stark naked, Dave. Oh, uh, I'm just messing with you. Come in. I shuffled into his room and closed the door behind me, eyeing Hoss carefully. What, something on my face? Uh, no, no, just nervous, curious. About what? Well, you're going to show me the library, right? Ah, uh, right. You're not just pulling my leg, right? You can actually show me where it is? Oh, yeah, I can. Uh, Want to go now? I'm free, but if you're busy, uh, not at all, shall we? I followed Hoss out of his room and let him lead me to the conservatory. Um, I looked around. There was no way this was the library, and Hoss seemed to be aware that I wasn't buying it. So, the library. The library. This isn't it. Nope, but we get there through here. What do you mean? All right, well, consider it this way. We're in a reading room, right? Right, so... Books. Exactly. Oss wandered over a bookcase against one of the walls, leaning against the wall beside it as he continued. And what better source for books than... A library? Not in confirmation, Hoss pulled two books on the bookshelf forward and something clicked. I watched in awe as Hoss gently slid the bookshelf aside, revealing a corridor beyond. I gulped, realising why Benson had said to bring my flashlight with me. It's almost pitch black down there. Why is it so dark down there? Oh, lights don't work. But come on, I'll show you the library. Hoss turned the light on his phone on, stepping into the corridor. For one last look at the conservatory I followed. Are you doing all right? Stay close, don't want you tripping over anything. I shuffled close to him, bumped directly into Hoss, who had stopped suddenly. He reached back, feeling down my arm until it called my hand for walking forward, holding his phone in front of him. The corridor must have been long, so we were walking for a bit before we stopped. Why do we stop? Oh, we're here. Ready? I nodded in the darkness. Who knows if Hoss could actually see me or not, but he proceeded forward anyway. The room filled out before us. Bookshelves filled the brim in some cases and left completely bare in others. A lot of which I could only make out as Hoss scanned the room with his phone. Ta-da! The library. Huh. I stepped forward, looking around some more. We were standing on the higher of the two levels, the rail stopping you from just falling down to the floor below. It's dark here, too. But why? There's no windows either. Uh, nope, it's, uh, well, a private library for sure. But how is this here? How deep are we? Oh, we're still on the same level as the conservatory. Go down there, you'll be on the same level as the bedrooms. Oss and I wandered forward carefully as my eyes tried to adjust to the dark. Kind of cool, huh? But there's no lights? Oh, only candles. See, down there. Oss pointed down to the lower floor where a large desk sat with a few candles set up and lit. The only way I could make them out in the dark was because they were bone white against the dark wood. Okay, so the conservatory's the only way in here? Well, as far as I know. 
Huh, all right. So, uh, why do you want to come here? Oh, I was just looking for it. But why, though? Not that much here, only well. I started to lead the way, descending the staircase and guiding me over to one of the walls. My heart sank as I realised what I was looking at. W wait. Before us looked a very familiar looking door, right down to the keypad sitting next to it. There's another one? Oh, sure looks like it. This this wasn't what I was expecting to find you. Oh, what were you looking to find you? Unless there's a book, there's nothing here, right? I, uh, yeah, you're right. But how did you find this room? How did you know about the books? I, uh... Have you been here before? Okay, okay, fine. This mansion? Yeah, I've been here before. I know it very well. After all, this is where I was supposed to make my first big break as an actor. Wait, really? Yep, didn't rise until we pulled up, but this is the same place. Confirmed it when I tried the bookcase. Who else knows about this? You haven't been here before, I mean. Oh, it'd be hard to say. Benson would know if only because he was around when we were setting up. What about the owner? Or the owner of the mansion? I don't know. Never met him. Do you know his name, at least? Nope. He was scarce when we were setting up the hidden cam microphones and cameras for stuff. I always just assumed he was off somewhere else, giving out free reign to wander around. I only know it's a guy based on context clues. Damn. Okay. So, uh, happy? I guess so. We stood in silence for a few moments when my gaze wandered over the vault-like door on the wall. So, what are you going to do? Keep this a secret? I don't know why you were keeping it a secret still, especially after... Well... Oh, about Benson? Well, yeah. Uh, to be honest, it's a few different things. I left a lot of regrets here. Being here again both makes me pumped up as if I was getting another shot, but also sad they never got to eventuate. So, places like this... Well, they're private, at least for now. Places that only I, and I guess now you, can enjoy. Secrets, you know? I nodded slowly, understanding somewhat. I'm sorry, Hoss. I, uh, at least I feel like I should be. I didn't know. I mean, you know I didn't know. It's just... Uh... I chuckled quietly, pulling my gaze to the floor. I leaned back on the desk, sighing out. At least I was ready for tonight, it seemed. Happy? I think so. Oh, good. Hoss, are you... Okay. A few moments of silence before he sighed out, scratched himself through his mane. Oh, just secrets, this whole thing. Uh, can I share another one with you? Oh, um, okay. It's uh, part of the reason why I moved out here. Admittedly, I'm bisexual, right? Oh, you like girls too? I just like guys. Uh, focus, Dave. Oh, sorry, uh, go on. Well, anyway... It's a liking guys part of the problem. Parents are constantly asking me if I have a girlfriend, mom wants kids. The guys are just a little easier to get along with. Well, I don't know what it's like for lions, but hyena girls are scary. And I just prefer... well... I pointed down, hoping Hoss would get the picture. Uh, it's not about that, Dave. It's just family stuff. Expectations. What, to have a family? Dad said that adopting was always an option. A family is a family no matter what. Oh, Dave, if only. There's certain views about what a family should be that makes it hard. Me liking guys isn't setting a good example of my siblings, for instance. I shook a little, confused. But that doesn't make any sense. Why does that matter? Love is love, isn't it? Well, it'd be nice if that was the case, but I don't know. Off side out and came to stand next to me, leaning on the desk. Just... The library, what I just told you. Can you keep it a secret for me, just for a little while? Please? Okay. Only for a little while. We'll show you this soon. I just, you know. If you don't, I will. Especially because... I pointed the door he showed me, looking to host to see him nod. Oh, that's fair. If anything happens like last night, then we'll show everyone right away, yeah? I think that'd be best. Otherwise, what, a couple of days? Tomorrow? A couple of days. But uh, give me a chance to get the courage together. Okay. Uh, for now, want to get out of here? Oh, it's dark, probably dusty than it needs to be, unless there's something else you need from here. Ah, uh, no, no, I think I'm good. Hoss moved to lead the way, making sure the light on his phone was on before making his way towards the stairs. I rushed to catch up to him, hesitating on my approach. I feel like I understood Hoss a little better, maybe understanding why he'd keep this under wraps. 
Nodding to myself, I took the last few steps confidently, shooting Hoss a friendly smile. All right, let's go. Up the stairs and back through the dark corridor, Hoss guiding the way until we were back in the conservatory. I winced as my eyes adjusted to the light. Oh, one last thing. Hmm? Hoss pulled the bookcase back into position, it locking into place with an accompanying click. He then pointed the two books, tapping his spines. Pull these two to open it. And to close that, just move it back. Well, that's it. Oh, but here's the important thing. If you're on the other side and someone's closed it, you're stuck. No way to open it from the other side. So what happens if I get stuck? Well, I guess if you go missing, I'll come check you first. Otherwise, maybe just have your phone on you to call for help. Does this get used all that often? You know, I'm not sure. I assume Benson would know about this too, whether he uses it or not. Who knows? Easy, I'll have my phone on me when I go visit it. There you go. Now, is there anything else you needed today, Dave? Uh, what, so now I've showed you my secrets, you're done? No, well, yes, but I'm... Uh, but what? I kind of... Did you need a hug? I kind of want to give you a hug. What? Because before I feel like I shouldn't have pried. And not only that, but you were uh, with your family? That a word, Hoss stepped forward and hugged me tight, pinning my arms to my sides. Oh, as best I could, I hugged him back, catching a whiff of something strong and tropical smelling in Hoss's fur. Reminded me of the beach. Is there anything else I can do to help? Nah, that's all right. I'll just go chill out for a bit. Maybe take a cat nap. Hoss let me go and wandered over the door leading out. Uh, see you at dinner? Oh, okay. He's gone for I could even wave. Looking out the window, I saw there were still some hours of sunlight left. Hours they had to fill waiting until it was time to meet Oz. I made my way back to the staircase, sitting at the top of the stairs and looking down in the foyer. What a day. I thought about what to do for the rest of the afternoon. I was tired, but not tired enough to go take a nap, so maybe I just needed some sun. Wandering outside, I figured I'd splash around in the water for a little bit. Not a full swim, but just enough to keep me going until dinner. I entered the pool and looked around, seeing Sal and Tyson talking to one another about something. Okay, fine, I get it. Are you sure you do? I can run through it again if you need it. I said I get it. You can lay off it already. Okay, I heard you. Still, uh, should I leave you two alone or... Ah, oh, shit, Papa, how long have you been here? And not long, but uh, you were talking about something? Nothing important. Yeah, just having a chat. Look between the two of them with a frown. Just a chat, huh? Yeah, a chat. It really wasn't anything important. The conversation was over. I'm going to bail and go to some weights. Want to come, up? No, I'm good, I think. Oh, well, all right, I guess. I'll catch you at dinner. I looked at Sal, who seemed to be watching Tyson leave with a slight frown. When Ty was out of sight, he looked back to me carefully. So... Yes? You and Tyson. Uh, what about me and Ty? Sal scratched his cheek briefly before shaking his head. Oh, don't worry about it. I'm imagining things. Imagining? What? If I didn't know better, you two were close. Very close. Well, we are, but really close. He's just Ty, right? If you say so. With a shrug, Slal slipped back into the water and began to swim around, leave me to my devices. I came out with some sun and figured I might as well sit back on one of the pool chairs and maybe have a nap. I closed my eyes and let my mind wander. Tonight. Tonight was going to make everything make sense again. I just had to talk to Oz. So I was becoming like a mantra, a grounding statement to keep me on task. That said, with how tired I was and the warmth of the sun above, I was quickly succumbing to sleep. I've been tired a lot lately. More tired than maybe I should be even with coffee. Was I not drinking enough? Was I drinking too much? The next thing I know, Sal's gently shaken me to bring me inside for dinner. He apparently already showered and changed back into his clothes. We walked inside together. I entered the dining room for dinner in a day, so my mind was going a mile a minute. Roswell wandered over and put a plate of pasta in front of me, much like he was with the others. I thought I was hungry, but as it got close to the meeting with Oz, I found I had less and less of an appetite. I ate half and spent the rest of dinner playing with what was left with my fork. Dave, you all right? Huh? 
You've been spacey all dinner. This isn't... Well, okay, maybe it's a little on brand for you, but not this much. I'm fine. Maybe just tired. I scrunch my nose up, wiping my face. I feel like it's more than just tiredness. You're not bottling something up again, are you? No, no, just... I guess yesterday's still weighing on my mind. I'll be all right. I looked at Roswell and flashed him a smile, doing the same to Dean. They looked at one another for shooting me a concerned look. Well, if you're sure. If you need to talk, though. Well, feel free to grab either of us, all right? I nodded at them and they backed off, saying something to one another only once they were close enough to the kitchen that couldn't hear them. When all was said and done, I headed back to my room. I showered, changed into a fresh shed of clothes, almost I was dressing to impress. I was nervous. Was this what going on the date was like? My phone was in my hand constantly, checking if it was the time to head out. In the back of my mind, I wondered if this was a mistake after all. Was I just about to go march into my death? Should I back out? So I lay on my bed, waiting. All I could think of was if I'd survived the night and see my friends again in the morning. Not just my friends, but also, well... I sat out a shuddered breath, wiping the corners of my eyes. I had to steal myself. I could do this. And then it was time. Carefully, I left my room, checking if the coast was clear. I had my flashlight in my hand, primed with new batteries thanks to Benson. Not only that, but seeing the state of the library myself told me I was going to need it. Slipping into the conservatory, I took another look around. No one else was here. No one else was wandering around. I was free to continue on undisturbed. Looking at the bookcase, I remembered Hoss's warning from before, put in my pocket to make sure I had my phone. There was no telling what could happen, so I wanted to be prepared. OK, Dave, you can do this. Time to meet Oz. Two books I needed to pull to open the passage looked a lot more obvious now than which ones they were. Once I'd pulled them, I heard the click and gently pushed the bookcase aside. It was heavy and moved aside slowly, but I pushed it just enough to clear the gap and enter the dark corridor. I stood there in the dark for a couple of moments, bracing myself. It was a heavy darkness, different from the one I was used to, but it felt similar all the same. Turning on my flashlight, I wandered forward, keeping it trained low in case there's anything on the ground I could potentially trip over. So I entered the library, I looked down to the lower floor. The candles on the desk were lit, signalling that someone else had been here recently. They st- weren't still here. Down the stairs, I wandered over the desk, keeping my eyes peeled for anyone lingering just out of sight. If I was going to get jumped, I realised I was thoroughly unprepared to fend off an attack. Uh, hello? I flicked the beam of my flashlight around, trying to catch a glimpse of literally anyone else. As the light landed on the vault-like door, I froze, watching as it opened with a low, metallic creak. My throat was suddenly dry, making me gulp. There was a pit in my stomach growing now, a lingering dread or a worry that something was about to go wrong. Roswell's joke from days ago echoing through my mind again. Oz, is that you? A darkness lingered on the other side of the door, the point I wondered if my flashlight was broken. I edged forward, legs shaking, reaching towards the threshold of the door before a shadow moved, making me squeak and drop my flashlight. Oh no, 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 please don't kill me. Dave? I almost shrieked, keeping my eyes closed and arms out to protect my head and face. I heard something shuffling around near me, for I felt the butt of my flashlight nudge me. Oh, take your flashlight, boy. I carefully opened my eyes, taking the flashlight back and lifting it to illuminate who was speaking to me. Um, I'll have a seat. I'm sure you have some questions. Are you, um, oh, very well. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Oswin Hammond, youngest of the three Hammond siblings, but you may know me as Oz. I searched the older boy's face, curious, questions running through my head. Oswin wandered over the side of the desk close to the candle, sitting down. Oh, um, nice to meet you. I'm... I know, Dave. Uh, Sit down. I sat in the chair opposite him, eyes flicking across the handles for looking him in the eye. Well, I'm sure you have many questions, most of which I'll answer for you soon. I'll get the obvious ones out of the way first. Um, okay. After that, you can ask me whatever you like freely. But I'll tell you now that I'm not going to waste my time answering inane questions that are relevant to what's going on. Understood? Yes, sir. Furthermore, it behooves me to tell you the truth where I can, but understand that I too have my secrets. Seem fair? Or off you're the bad guy. Oh, what do you mean? Well, if you don't tell me everything, then who's to say you aren't just, you know, making me trust you if you can just kill me later? The question hung in the air for a moment, Oswin's gaze focused on me. 
Why, if I wanted you dead, you'd have been disposed of a long time ago. There's less sense in warning you of dangers than like if I, myself, am the one behind the death of your friends. I guess that makes sense. Now, where to begin? Sorry, but can I ask something real quick? What is it? Why are you wearing a lab coat? Are you a doctor? Well, I was once upon a time, uh, not any more. What happened? That in of itself is a long story. As much as I love stories, that one isn't like one of the child-friendly ones I'm so fond of. Oh. My areas of expertise and speciality was pharmaceuticals and drug development. Tested. In other words, I developed vaccines. That sounds good. Why'd you give it up? Oh, my license was revoked when a test went bad. 100 subjects, 99 died. I tensed up, not wanting to ask where I was thinking. Sadly, Oswin seemed to know exactly where my head was and paled when he told me. It's ridiculously small for a proper clinical trial, but for what we were testing, it was hardly legal. Because of my arrogance, I am responsible for all 99 of those deaths. All children, too. Um, don't worry about it, Dave. What was the medicine you were testing? Well, a cure or vaccine, a miracle elixir for everything and anything. Cancer, organ failure, HIV, you name it. Probably some of my best work. But Oswin's gaze narrowed on me slightly, making me go quiet for I could continue. But it didn't work. I botched my calculations along the way and created something quite fatal instead. So, if you're a doctor, what do you do now? Oh, nothing. Shy of enjoying children's stories and reading up on mycology, I live comfortably doing whatever I feel like, which admittedly is very little. But why do you still wear the coat then? Do you still do experiments and stuff? That seemed to hit a nerve with Oswin's gaze narrowing slightly. Oh, funny enough, yes, I do. My lab is still in the house, hidden away, given what's in there. Chemicals and poisons that are kept securely away from easy access, not to mention some samples of diseases and bacteria for development purposes. I shifted uneasily in my chair. The boar opposite me had poisons and chemicals just around. The prospect of having poisons around was scary, or even having diseases on hand just ready to go. If you said the truth, you could infect us with something really nasty if you really wanted to. Oh, we're getting off track. I, okay, sorry. Let's discuss the vault itself. The three of us made it. My older brother, may he rest in peace, myself and my older sister. But what is it? It is what its name suggests. A storage place, although truthfully it's closer to a containment unit. So there's something inside. What's in there? Benson apparently has given us the code to open it if we found all the medals. Ah yes, father's old collection of medals. I'm not liberty to say what's in there, and I have no intention of telling you anyway. All I can promise is that while not dangerous, it would be best if that door were never opened. I frowned, confused as to what he meant. They pondered it over, I noticed him watching me think it through with a slight smirk. I pouted, mumbling to myself. Couldn't be that bad. Or perhaps or it could be something that could end the world as we know it. OK, but it just holds a thing, right? Correct. But then why, why, why when I use it? Ah, that. I was getting to that. It was never intended to be just a quarantined room, but more an attempt at something more. A collective effort to make the world better. My older siblings were more keen on designing and theorising about it, speculating with something more they dabbled in when I'd much rather have something more quantifiable. But how is it going to change the world for the better? Morphic resonance. The blank stare gave him return must have disappointed him, stopping him from getting revved up about the tangent he's about to go on. For another way, making a better use of the inherent survival instinct instilled in every living being on the planet. But haven't seen myself die, just... Just what? Or Roswell was in the, in the museum. Uh, attacked from behind, next to a book. Anything else distinguishable about the scene? Not that I can think of aside from the book he was next to, just a big one left open. Anything of note within it? Looked like the word discovery was underlined in blood. My chance did that happen to be the password? Yeah. And then for Benson, Oswin tensed up, rolling his shoulders briefly as I trailed off. Uh, go on. Shot, but it, it didn't seem right. I used the word betrayal for that one. But if this were meant to be a thing for my survival instinct, why haven't I seen myself? Perhaps I wasn't clear. The theory was that it would rely on morphic resonance, but, well, you've seen how that works. Have I been in danger? Or oh, indirectly. The concept revolves around trauma. Survivors using traumatic experiences to have different behaviours in similar situations moving forward. 
So while you've not been in danger as such, you've suffered through these events. But they never happened. Well, as Reginald would say, not this time around. I... hmm, I don't get it. Nor do I expect you to. It's a load of rubbish for me, to be frank. Ugh. Timelines, alternate realities, rubbish. I don't understand. I'm sorry. With a sigh, Oswin took a moment to collect his thoughts before he explained. The reason the vault showed you these things, and again consider this is all just theory and hypothesis, is because you've lived through those experiences before, in a third lifetime perhaps. Those words must have some significance to show how you lived through those experiences, how those events shaped your life after they happened. Those words, along with the sound playing to the right frequency, is supposed to trigger the reaction, but therein lies the problem. There seems to be a lot of problems, I think. Agreed, but I'll state the specific one. As the only person present knows how the system behind the vault operates, I'm the only one that can program those passwords in. And I assure you, I've only programmed two, neither of which I'll tell you is there the code to the door itself to open, plus something else. But that's... But what? I stared at him, dumbfounded. That's impossible. How else would the words get in there? The question hung in the air without an answer for a while, for Oswin replied, his tone quiet and uncertain. I don't know. Oh. Now, I think it's your turn, Dave. Oswin's voice was lowered, taking on an air of seriousness. While he's very no-nonsense before, I felt the tone in the conversation get heavy from how he poised himself. I've said what I need to say. If you have any questions, I'm all ears. I gulped, looking Oswin in the eye. He stared right back through his glasses, watching me carefully. This was it. And the off chance I had never had the chance to talk to him again, I had to make sure I asked anything that might be important. Okay. He's only going to tell me things that were relevant. All I had to do was ask. But what was considered relevant? And there... We leave things for now. We'll pick up the uh, Oswin questions on the next Roswell video. I think uh, next up it's actually going to be Dean, so we'll do his route, then uh, Roswell will be along after that. So, that was a, another long one. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye for now.